Welcome back. In the last lesson, we looked at how dictionaries handle missing keys using just what they have for being dictionaries. In this lesson, we're ready to look a bit more closely at default dict. The first thing you need to know about default dict is that it's part of the standard library. Here is the documentation for the Python standard library. And if I scroll down, you can see that here, there's an entry for collections under data types. If I click on that and follow that link, then there's an entry here for default dict. This is a dict subclass. Remember, I told you that default dict inherits from dict. And what's interesting about it is that it calls a factory function to supply missing values. And what they're referring to, of course, is values which are missing for a certain key when you're trying to access a key. So in case that was a bit too quick, I clicked on that link and came here to the documentation for default dicts. What is interesting about default dict is that if a key isn't present in the dictionary or in the default dict in this case, then that triggers missing. And missing, in turn, triggers default factory. And this is what is going to generate a default value for the key which you were trying to access but wasn't there. This will become a bit more clear as we're looking at examples in the REPL. In fact, let's go there now. So here I am at the terminal, and I'm going to enter the Python REPL. And the first thing I'm going to do here is that from collections, I'm going to import default dict. There we go. So this is what you would do anytime that you want to work with default dict. You would load it into memory from a package called collections. Before we move on, I would just like to prove to you that it is a subclass of dict. And I'll do that using is subclass. This takes two parameters. The first is default dict. So the object which I'm checking and the second is the class which I want to know this object might be inheriting from, and that would be dict. And this returns true. So you can see I'm not lying. Default dict does inherit from dict. And that means that for the most part, it behaves just like a normal dictionary. Okay, so let's create a default dict. I'm going to name this one def dict, and I will use the assignment operator and then the syntax is default dict. And here I have to pass a callable. So this can be float, int, set, list, etc. And I'm going to go with list for now. Now you'll notice that I just used the keyword list. There's no open and close of parentheses after list. In fact, that's a common mistake. So do pay attention to that. Okay, so now I have a default dict here. We can just check the type quickly. And you can see this is a default dict and it comes from collections. And just like with the dictionary, I can assign values to keys. So I'm going to create a first key, and call it one, and I'm going to assign the value one. So just the integer one. And you'll see that if I call this the way I would with the dictionary, it returns the value one. So that mapping works. Now let's see what happens if I try to call a key which isn't present. So one is there, we already know. Let's try missing. You can see that unlike what happened in the introductory lesson, this didn't error out. I didn't get a traceback and I didn't get a key error. Instead, it smoothly returned a list, which is what I had set up here. So no error, my code continues to work and I can use this list. In fact, let's try something slightly different. So rather than trying to access missing, which now isn't missing, I will try accessing another missing. But remember, this is going to give me a list since there is no key for another missing. So I can already treat this as a list, for example, by appending a value to it. Now, if I call my default dict, just as I would a dictionary, I can see that it has three values in there or three entries. The first is the key one, which is mapped to the int one. Then there is the key missing mapped to an empty list. And then finally, there is the key another missing which contains a list, which in turn contains the integer four. These are the main takeaways from this lesson. Unlike what happens with a dictionary, which will give you a key error if you try to access a key which isn't present, a default dict will trigger missing, which in turn triggers default factory. And the exact behavior of default factory will depend on what you passed as a parameter when you first constructed your default dict. So in our example, I gave it list. And so it created a list whenever it encountered a key that was missing. But as we'll see later, you could also pass 
a set, an int, a float, etc. That all depends on the use case, and we'll look at that in a minute. I'll see you in the next lesson, where we can practice using default dict.